what's going on guys um uh, sitting here today in my little office area right here uh and uh sitting here in my recliner <laughs> but um anyway oh uh, so i just get on here and make a video um uh, i had uh, a subscriber uh he asked me uh, several questions and uh instead of responding back uh, which I did respond back and uh, let him know I'm just going to do a video because because uh, he did have several questions uh, and he did apologize for for asking so many questions. Guys, uh, don't apologize. They, uh, I mean, that's what I'm out here trying to do, and and uh, there's a lot of other guys out here on YouTube. Uh, that's that's what we're trying to do is help others uh, share our experience uh, in this industry and and uh, share our adventures and stuff like that and. And uh, just sort of pass our knowledge on to others to help others. So, uh, so don't ever apologize. But, uh, but like I said, he did have several questions, and uh, and he may have several more. Uh, some of the questions he had, uh, I've actually gotten um, uh, other subscribers and everything either send me an email or or um, uh, comment on on my on one of my videos or something, uh, asking me a question and. Um, and some of the questions they asked is pretty much the same thing he asked. So, like I said, I'm just going to uh, do, um, like in the title, I'm just going to sort of title it, uh, Most Common Questions uh, Asked in RV Transport. So, but anyway, uh, I got my tablet here, and uh, I'm going to take a little drink of my sun-kissed orange drink. <laughs> but anyway, so, um... Some of the other uh, subscribers and uh, this asked me questions, sent me emails and stuff. Um, I was trying to scroll back through some things, but um, I found a couple. Uh, but this one I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, I hope you don't mind, but the um, uh, his, I guess, uh, showing PHX Bro 1. Uh, so if you're watching this, um, uh, like I said, I, I sent you a, a comment saying I was going to do a video and uh, so asking uh, some of these questions so uh, I'm gonna basically read the email and then I'm gonna go back and uh, answer some of the questions I may an uh, add in a few other uh, things that that um, that are most commonly asked but it says um, what do you do uh, for backhauls do you need DOT and MC number uh, do you get your insurance through Indiana transport how much is insurance uh, do you have a CDL? Are you under DOT regulations like ELD and drug testing, IFTA? Uh, can you also haul for other RV transport companies? What kind of fuel mileage do you get when hauling? Uh, and then it says, I'm going to stop asking so many questions. But um, uh, as far as backhauls, guys, a lot of these questions, it depends on, on what company you're leased to. Uh, some companies may have backhauls, some may not even offer backhauls, some just may not have as many uh, backhauls. Um, so, as far as backhauls go um, with us, for the most part, no. Um, you deliver and then uh, you just either come on back home or go back and get your next load. Um, now there are, we do have a backhaul board. Um, and basically what is on that board is stuff that um, it may be coming uh, back from the dealer, going back to Indiana. Maybe it needs some repairs in, in, uh, in Indiana. So you may be bringing it back. And uh, uh, so that would be on the backhaul board. Uh, like I said, most of these are slim to none. But you know, if you, like I said, probably 95% of the time, no, you're not gonna have no backhaul. Um, coming back from your area the so uh, like I said you get on the backhaul board and you may find something you may find uh, a driver uh, that's maybe broke down and uh, so maybe you need to go relay his load for him or her and um, so uh, so that would be on the backhaul board so basically um, you might get lucky and it may be in your area or maybe in the route that you're going either uh, coming back home or whatever and uh, so, uh, so you can pick that. The uh, sometimes you may have a transfer uh, from like one dealership to another dealership. 
Um, like for an example, I've done several of these and I'm actually leaving tomorrow to go do one. Um, right here at my local uh, dealership, uh, Great American RV here in Belden. Um, they got a transfer needing to go to uh, Bow Bridge, um, Louisiana. Uh, same store, Great American RV. Uh, it's going to be, I think, a 30, I think it's a 32 foot Jayco fifth wheel, uh, which I'll also be doing a video on that. But so things like that are on the backhaul board. Um, they, I've also asked them, hey, whenever I get down there, uh, do you have another, do you have anything that needs to be brought back from, say, Bow Bridge or Hammond, brought back up here? Um, I might get lucky, and they may need one uh, coming back, so I may be loaded both ways. The um, uh, other things is, um, say, a dealership in your area may, uh, that uses Indiana Transport or whatever company you're leased to, um, they may... Um, sell a, a unit, a camper to somebody and then um, maybe they don't have the vehicle to pull it yet so um, so they may go through Indiana or who, like I said, whoever you're with and uh, put that on the backhaul board and so you'll go to that dealership and maybe deliver it to their house uh, I've seen some on the backhaul board where um, maybe uh, you pick it up at their house or, or, or like say we're staying in an RV park, then, um, like going, all right, going back real quick. So like if the dealership sold one to an individual, uh, they didn't have the truck to pull it. So if y'all go back and watch the video, uh, I think it, I think I titled it, uh, is it too heavy or something like that. Uh, it was a monster fifth wheel. Uh, for me anyway they I think it was um, a 45 foot uh, Jayco seismic or something like that and um, a guy in uh, Knoxville Tennessee bought it uh, from down here in Tupelo Mississippi or Belden and um, so I took that from here to Knoxville and delivered it uh, to where they were staying at their RV park and uh, so, like I said, those will be on the back of board. But, so going back to um, maybe somebody had some um, maybe warranty uh, damages or something that maybe they couldn't do at the dealership, that it needed to go back to, uh, to Elkhart in the Indiana. And so you may go to their house or whatever, pick it up, and carry it to Indiana. Um, or you may... Uh, maybe the trucks broke down in the shop. Maybe they don't have one, so you may go there and pick it up and bring it back that way. Um, same thing uh, like with dealerships. See, guys, there's a lot of stuff going on with dealerships sometimes. Uh, you just you, you Sometimes it's on there, sometimes it's not. You just got uh, may get lucky sometimes. But So maybe, uh, say maybe they had a big fifth wheel or something, and... Um, or even a travel trailer. And so uh, maybe their trucks broke down, they're not, uh, or they don't have a truck yet. So say if they have a, a travel trailer fifth wheel, maybe they're trading in on a mobile home. Well, you may need to go to their house, pick it up, come to the dealership, and then um, so that way they can trade it in. Or maybe they're going from a travel trailer to a fifth wheel, uh, or vice versa. Maybe they're downsizing. Maybe they're going from a fifth wheel to a travel trailer. And uh, so maybe they need it brought from their house to the dealership and then from the dealership back to their house. Who knows? Uh, things like that do pop up on the backhaul board. But, uh, and then like I said, other companies that are out there, um, I'm not going to name any companies, but I have heard that there's uh, some that, uh, I mean, as far as backhauls, you may get a cargo trailer or like one of them uh, restroom trailers or horse trailers or things like that. Um, you just got to add, you, whenever you get ready to lease on, um, just call all of the transport companies in Indiana and uh, and ask them those questions. Hey, all right, guys, sorry about that. If uh, the sound sounds different or the angle is a little bit different, um, <laughs> my phone ran out of storage. <laughs> so, but, um, so basically I'm on, um, uh, no, so I can go ahead and finish up this video. 
I just got my other phone and I just transfer it all here in a minute. I need to go through my phone and delete a bunch of stuff, save a bunch of stuff on the SD card or something so that way I can uh, clear up my storage. Uh, this phone I got, it does not have, um, it has like 500 and something gigabytes of, of uh, internal memory and it does not have a, uh, a slot for an SD card. Uh, I, I don't like that, but... One of the main reasons I got the phone was mainly for the camera. Uh, it has an excellent camera. But, but anyway, uh, I think we was on as far as the backhaul, uh, what we was talking about. And um, uh, like I said, depending on the company, just call around and ask uh, different companies um, uh, basically all these questions that I'm going over. Because uh, like I said, some companies may offer it, some companies may not. Um, but, um, but there are backhauls out there uh, in RV transport as a uh, as a single pull driver, and uh, so let me get with that real quick. As a single pull driver, um, there are backhauls, but not many. Now, if you was doing haul and tow, or um, or say multi haul, say if you had like a like a fifty three foot shipsy trailer that you was pulling, then uh, then yes, there are many more options out there for you as far as backhaul. Uh, coming back, you can get cars, um, uh, cargo trailers, um, you, I mean, golf carts, pretty much tractors, whatever. Um, and so you can get all that stuff. Um, and some companies out there do offer this. And um, to me, it's really not worth the hassle of going uh, through it. And... Um, and one of those reasons is for me and for, I mean, there's a, not everybody, but for a lot of people out here, they just enjoy coming back. Because uh, if you have a trailer or or if you get a backhaul, pull another trailer, then there may be some places you can't get into that maybe you want to go sightsee or something like that. Uh, to me, um, not all the time. Sometimes I just want to get back home. Um uh, then sometimes uh, I just want to sightsee. So after I deliver, then I mean I'm just just got a regular old put, uh, truck, so I can get in and out wherever I want to, and uh, just go take in the scenery and and, and enjoy the life of, of uh, transporting and the, like the fun side of RV transport. And like I said, you may not do that all the time, but and anyway, as far as um um. Yeah, doing multi-haul and stuff. Now, there's a whole lot more options out there for you. But, um, so, uh, oh, yeah. So, as far as um, the other options. Now, if you want to pay for your own load board, like, say, uh, DAT or, or load board, or maybe you can get some free ones, and say you see a load in your area, the... Now, it does have to go through the company that you're leased on to because you're running under their authority and and uh, and their insurance whenever you're loaded and all that kind of stuff. So, it has to be through them. So, basically, you find the load and then you call the com your company that you're leased on with. And then, so you can uh, go back and um, and maybe it's still on there. Uh, now, they are going to get a percentage of it. Uh, so, if that load's not paying too much, then the time they get their percentage, it's probably not going to be paying much at all. Uh, now, it might be enough to cover your fuel and maybe a little bit more, but, <laughs> I mean, that's probably going to be about it. So, uh, I know I've uh, hit on that topic pretty well. So, uh, as far as uh, DOT and MC numbers, um, and then this sort of applies also to, um, to like, uh, having your own authority so you can get your own authority and get your own insurance and run for yourself and you can make more money that way um now in the end you may not make no much more money i mean you make a little bit but there's gonna be i mean you got to put the good with the bad so if you're running your, under your own authority then uh yes you get paid more at the top end but you you got more headaches and stuff as far as um i mean just 
you may have to go to the uh, straight to the manufacturer and pick up the camper. Uh, those campers have to be off the manufacturer's lot by a certain time. So if you can't make it up there, then now you, maybe you have to pay somebody to go up there and, and get it and uh, store it, or you may have to have a storage lot. That's the reason most of these transport companies have a lot of storage lots, and because uh, they have to get them off the manufacturer's property, and then they'll store them, and then we will pick them from there. That's the reason behind that. Um, and then insurance, uh, running under your own authority, uh, you're going to be paying a lot more insurance uh, as far as uh, that goes. Um, but as far as DOT numbers and MC numbers, the DOT numbers, the, uh, so you run under whatever company you're leased on with. Uh, as far as MC number, um, guys, I've been in trucking for years, uh, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I still don't know. If I'm not mistaken, I believe MC number, uh, you only need that if you have your own authority uh, and, um, and plus running, um, uh, say like if you was running, say uh, over 26,000, then I think you need an MC number. Um, if I'm wrong, I apologize, somebody correct me, but I believe that's the way it is. If you're over 26,001 uh, pounds, then, um, or 26,001 pound or more, then uh, then I'm assuming that's where the MC number comes into play. But as far as DOT number, MC number, uh, whatever, then that goes, uh, you're running under uh, whatever company you're leased to's uh, authority. And so you're running under their DOT number. So you do not have to have one. If, if you're leased on with somebody. And uh, somebody just called me. But um, so uh, now if you're doing uh, multi-haul or uh, haul and tow and, you're, and your truck is registered for over uh, 26000 then um uh then yes you'll have to uh probably have an mc number if that's how i'm thinking but uh and then that also goes into effect uh with one of his questions about ifta um as long as you're under twenty six thousand one pounds then you do not have to run ifta um once you go over twenty six thousand one pounds then you have to run ifta and um so um, so like I said, single haul, unless you was doing like heavy, heavy stuff, then, um, then for the most part, you're, most of these transport companies on single pulls, um, or tollways, then you're registered under 26,000. Um, do you get your uh, insurance through Indiana Transport? Um, and this goes the same for any other company. Yes and no. Uh, you can um, get it, and you could probably get it cheaper uh, going through whatever company you're leased with. And um, but you can go and get it on your own. Uh, you just have to make sure that it meets whatever requirements that company that you're leased on to um, with. You got to make sure that it meets their requirements. So, um, you got to make sure that the policy, um, as far as unladen insurance and, and stuff like that. So, unladen insurance is almost the same um, as, no, uh, uh, crap, my mind just went blank. But, um, but anyway, so, you got to have unladen insurance. Uh, you got to have... Uh, some companies require you to have, uh, may only require you to have a uh, 500,000 um, uh, dollar coverage. Some may have, uh, you have, have to have a million dollar uh, coverage. Uh, and then some states uh, may require you to have more. So, uh, so say like whatever company you're with, uh, say for an example, the company I'm with, Indiana Transport, they only require you to have 500,000. Well, here in Mississippi, which is where uh, my truck and all that stuff is registered, then Mississippi requires you to have a minimum of 750000 So you have to go by the minimum of whatever your state is. And um, so, uh, so, yeah, you can get it through 
uh, whatever company you're leased on with, go through whatever company they, they recommend. And whenever you lease on or, or whenever you're calling in, ask them, say, hey, uh, what companies do y'all uh, use or offer or whatever for insurance? And most of the time, uh, whatever company they offer, that, that insurance company is already going to know uh, what all they require. Uh, if you go get it on your own, through, especially through an insurance company or, or, or an agent, say your local agent, uh, say like Progressive. Progressive offers commercial insurance, but your agent may not be uh, knowledgeable on the transport industry. So, uh, so she may not or he may not know exactly what you need. And if you don't know exactly what you need, then uh, you could end up paying way too much by getting things you don't need, or you may get uh, may not get enough and things that that you might really need. So, um, if you go through your own, you're probably going to get better coverage through uh, somebody that, uh, an insurance company that you've dealt with for years, say like Progressive, uh, you might get better coverage, but, uh, but in the end, I mean, uh, better is always going to cost more. So, just keep that in mind. Um, how much is insurance? Uh, I'm not really going to give a price. Uh, you're just going to have to call around and, and get your own because um, it, it all depends. It, uh, I've seen it to where it depends on your age. Um, the, uh, one of my friends, he was over uh, 65 years old, and uh, one uh, insurance company that we went to get a quote for, uh, it was going to cost like $200 more a month just because he was over 65 years old, and that was it nothing same truck uh clean record everything and but just because he was over 65 years old it was going to cost right around about 200 dollars more a month and so age has to a factor to do with it um the age of your truck has uh things to do with it um how many miles you run a year plays effect in it um your driving record um Guys, everything plays a factor uh, in insurance cost. Um, how long you've been driving? How long you've had uh, commercial driver's license? If you have them, um, like I said, there's there's so many factors that that play into that that can change the rates and everything. So, um, uh, so guys, just you're just gonna have to call around and check and uh, and get as far as price goes. Do that. Um, you have to have a CDL. Uh, no, you do not have to have a CDL with most companies. Again, you're going to have to ask the company, whatever you're leasing on with, what they require. For the most part, you do not have to have a CDL. Um, it is better to have a CDL because, um, because you open your, um, you open up your availability to loads and stuff a whole lot more. So you know, you'll you'll have a be able to pull a, a lot more things if you have a CDL because the way that CDL works in non CDL. So with tow away and and pretty much haul and tow uh, multi hauls there you you pretty much might have to have a CDL for that. But uh, there are some uh, some uh, uh, tow and haul uh, trucks that that don't have CDL, um, but they're limited on what they can pull. With uh, single pull, so just basically tow away, pretty much you're only going to be, you're going to be limited to travel trailers for the most part. Uh, there's, I mean, you can probably get some fifth wheels. Um, but anyway, the way that non-CDL and CDL works, non-CDL, you go by the GVWR. So the GVWR of the truck and the trailer cannot be over what you're registered for, which is 26,000 pounds. So, say for an example, uh, my truck. I have a 2012 Chevy Silverado 3500 HD Dually. Um, so it's one ton. My GVWR is 13,000 pounds. Uh, now, if you have like say a 2500 uh, pickup, um, or say like an F-250 or something like that, 
well, your GVWR may only be like uh, 9,995 pounds or 10,000 or maybe 10,000 pounds. But, so say in my case, if you have a one ton, um, then 13,000 pounds. So that means I can only pull a 13,000 pound GVWR camper. Not the actual weight, the GVWR. So GVWR, 13,000 pounds, that camper only may weigh maybe nine or 10,000 pounds, but you have to go by the GVWR. If you do not have, so I'm gonna jump, uh, just throw something in there real quick. So if you do not have a CDL, then you're gonna be better off running with say an F250 or a 2500 series uh, truck, whether it be Dodge or Chevy. Um, and then so that way you can have more room to play with as far as GVWR on the camper. Um, so um, if you have a CDL, then you can go by actual weight. Uh, you still cannot go over. There's a lot of confusion in this. Uh, people think just because they have a CDL, they can haul whatever they want. That is not true, guys. They, you cannot go over whatever you're registered for, whatever your truck's registered for. Now, if you have a CDL and your truck's registered for 30, 40,000 pounds, then yes, you can haul up to 30 or 40,000 pounds, whatever your truck is registered for. So, um, like I said, there's a lot of confusion in that. Uh, a lot of people think that just because you have a CDL, oh, I can haul whatever. No, that is not true. Uh, I don't care what the company tells you. That company's going to get your butt in trouble by DOT. So, if you have a CDL, you can haul actual weight, but, like I said, you cannot go over whatever your truck's registered for, which in most cases is going to be 26,000 pounds. My dually, um, my dually is heavy. Uh, it has a steel flatbed on the back. Uh, I got a lot of tools and stuff in my truck that I carry with me. Um, my truck, empty weight with a full tank of fuel, uh, 136 gallons of fuel, um, weighs 11,000 pounds. So that means I can pull up to 15,000 pounds actual weight of a camper. So the, for the most part, 16.8 maybe up to 18,000 depending on whether it's a toy hauler or or something like that then um then that may uh it may be 16 8 18,000 pounds gvwr but the actual weight may only be 14 15,000 like that big uh jaco that i pulled uh, from here to knoxville the gvwr on that on that one was 19,995 pounds it was a toy hauler so you're going to have a lot of free uh, weight in that because you got to give factor for you're going to be hauling your side by side or something like that. So the actual weight on that camper was like 15,400. Now I was only able to run a half a tank of fuel in my big tank. So, uh, so that took off a lot of weight to get me because I think time I was ended up, I was right at 26,000 pounds. If I'd had a full tank of fuel, I'd have been over. So, um, so yeah, that, that plays a lot of, of, uh, there's a lot of play in that. Um, let's see what else. So, um, are you under DOT regulations like EOD, uh, and drug testing, uh, IFTA? I've already went over IFTA. Um, I'm going to go over this as far as, because EOD is going to take a little bit longer. Now, I'm trying to make this video as fast as I can, so it's probably going to be a little bit longer video. But uh, drug testing, yes. Um, anytime you run under DOT regulations, because you are under DOT regulations, um, you have to have a drug test. Uh, that's that's federal. That's federal law. So they uh, so as far as drug tests, yes, you have to have you have to do a drug test to stay in compliance with them. They, uh, and then plus your company may do, so like, I mean, if you're just working in a factory somewhere, they may do random drug tests. Uh, EOD, uh, there's some confusion out there about this too. Now, some people think 
because your CDL you have to run if you're uh, you have to run EOD. If you're non CDL, you don't. No, that has nothing to do with it. The the way that the EOD works in the RV transport industry is, and there's a lot of confusion out there about this. Uh, a lot of people don't uh, are confused about if you have to run EOD doing uh, tollway. Um, the way that the law states in the little green uh, FMSCA or whatever it is uh, book uh, by DOT, the what it states is well. Some people think that uh, that because it has a living quarters, then um, then it is uh, then you're exempt. Some people say because uh, because it's a new unit and it's not actually uh, registered to anybody, then you're exempt. Uh, and those may be true. The, but what it states in the book is as long as one axle of the commodity is touching the ground, then you are exempt from running ELD. Um, so what that means is the camper is the commodity so that's what you're pulling that's the commodity same thing a lot of people uh i've pulled boats before um a lot of people say well uh no you got to run eld with boats no you do not um yet well i'll take it back yes and no and i'm gonna explain why real quick so boats if the trailer and the boat is uh one uh, basically like sold as one piece um, then that's the commodity so if you're pulling it behind your pickup one act at least one axle of that commodity is touching the ground so you exempt now a lot of people do it but if say you have your own say boat trailer or say if the manufacturer puts a boat on a trailer and then they want you to deliver it and then whenever you get to the dealership they take the boat off and then they want you to bring the trailer back well then the trailer is the commodity not the boat so therefore yes you would have to run eld legally um so as far as campers go um as long as one axle if you're doing tollway as long as one axle is is touching the ground then you are exempt now if you was to take that camper say haul and tow or multi-haul and you load it onto your trailer now you now one of those campers you may say haul and tow one of them may be loaded one of them may be pulling well since one of them is loaded and it's not touching the ground then you are not exempt so you would have to run eld um, i hope that makes sense uh, there's a lot of videos on ELD uh, out there. You just have to make sure that you watch the right one because a lot of people will steer you wrong. Um, and, I mean, I don't know everything, but I am pretty knowledgeable uh, with it. So, um, can you haul for other RV transport companies? Uh, as far as tollway uh, and uh, haul and tow and multi-haul, no. Um, because you are, uh, your truck is leased on with one company. Your vehicle can only be leased on with one company at a time. You can only run under one DOT number. So, uh, so as far as doing tollway, stuff like that, no, you can only do one company. Now, if you want to do drive away, where you go, uh, pick up a motor home or like, say um i don't know like a ups truck or a, maybe a school bus or something like that if you're doing something like that drive away then you can be leased on with multiple companies because you don't have a vehicle it's only you so you know so you can be leased on with as many companies as you want but as far as doing like i said tollway stuff like that your truck can only be leased on with one company so i hope that answers the question um what kind of fuel mileage uh, are you getting when hauling? Again, I will tell you what I get. But again, that goes back with uh, with your vehicle. 
Uh, there's a lot of things that can play in that. Uh, is your vehicle stock? Uh, has it had a hefty tune? Has it had a weight loss? Um, Y'all like that song? <laughs> but anyway, um, so uh, yeah, has it had a weight loss? Uh, the uh, the age can play a difference. Uh, tires can play a difference. Um, travel trailers versus fifth wheels. Uh, uh, light versus heavy. Uh, all that stuff plays a difference. Uh, flat ground. Uh, up in the mountains. Uh, another thing that plays a big difference is wind. Wind will kill you. Um, especially if you're getting a strong headwind. So, for the most part, uh, speed has a big difference. If you have a heavy foot, you're going to get terrible fuel mileage. Um, if you're one of these out here that just like just to kick back and you don't mind everybody passing you and and uh, and you trip plan your plan your uh, your route just right and and all that kind of stuff and you just sit back 63 65 miles an hour then yeah you're gonna get good fuel mileage with me I got a little bit heavy foot oh uh, now I do back out of it uh, more than what I used to but uh, I try to stay. Uh, when loaded, I try to stay somewhere between 65 and 70. Uh, I could probably slow it down to 63, and I'd probably get a lot better. Because uh, I, I have been following a couple of guys uh, when we done a California run. And we stayed on 63 all the way over, out there. And I got great fuel mileage. But when, usually when I'm running by myself, I want to pick it up a little bit. So I try to stay about 65 to 70. So right about, about 67, 68. Um... Uh, my truck has had a weight loss. My truck is heavy uh, again. Uh, so um, I average, if everything goes just right, uh, no wind, uh, especially if I'm pulling the fifth wheel, I get better fuel mileage pulling the fifth wheel. Um, right around about, I guess, 10 and a half to 11. The, if I'm hitting wind, this lava would drop down. I mean, it could drop down to, if you're hitting heavy, heavy wind, and plus you're in the mountains, I mean, you probably get down to six, seven, eight miles a gallon. Um, if you have the perfect run and straight, flat ground, no wind, or maybe you're getting a tailwind, then you might get 13, 14 maybe loaded. Um, so, like I said, all kind of different stuff plays uh, plays a variable into that. Um, let's see here. I believe that was all his questions. So, I'm going to try to think of a few more real quick that other people uh, may have. Uh, so, give me just a minute. The, so, went over EOD. Went over IFTA, DOT regulations. Uh, I thought of some earlier, but now I don't forgot. Um, hmm. Let me look to my... Just bear with me, guys. I'm trying to make this as fast as I can. Um, try to go through some of my notifications here. Um, there's one about insurance. So yeah, we went over insurance. Um, let's see here. All right, I really don't see, uh, let's see, 
Oh, here's one. Are you required to wash these campers before you deliver to the dealership? Um, yes and no. Uh, for the most part, no. The, uh, I'm going to say 95% of the time, no. You do not have to wash it. Uh, some companies uh, require you to wash it uh, before you get there. Um, and then some companies uh, may, whenever you get to the dealership, may require you to pay them a wash fee. Um, like I think the one in Selma, Texas, I uh, forgot the name of it, but uh, you got to pay them and they wash it. Now, anytime you wash a camper, uh, if, now, if it doesn't say wash it and you wash it, I would not recommend that uh, because if that camper gets damaged or scratched from brushes or anything like that, you are responsible. And I, and I, that's another one I'll bring up just here in just a minute. So, um, so if the camper requires a wash fee or requires to be washed before you deliver, save that receipt, turn it into your company and you will be reimbursed. So that does not come out of your pocket. Now you may have to pay for it out of your pocket up front, but like I said, turn in your receipt and you will be reimbursed. The, so going back to, um, uh, Crap, my mind just went blank again, guys. I'm getting old. Um, let's see here. Um, so, yeah, get reimbursed, all that stuff. Uh, I should have said that right whenever I was thinking about it. I may be able to come back to me real quick. Um, let's see. Uh, tolls. Um, while you're pulling that camper if you have to run through tolls uh, again check with your company because a lot of company a lot of company may be different so uh, but for the most part whenever you're hooked to that camper you got to pay for your tolls up front but turn in your receipts you'll be reimbursed um, I know the company I'm with say if you go to the northeast like uh, like up to Connecticut uh, New York places like that uh, Sometimes they even uh, pay for your tolls coming back empty. Uh, so uh, so that'll be good. But for the most part, whenever you're empty, whether you're coming or going, then uh, then know that them tolls are on you. But whenever you're loaded, they will reimburse the tolls. Um, let's see here. So wash fees, campers, dealership. Um... Do, 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 do. Let's see like new I'm trying to find a few more like I said guys I want to try to answer as many questions as I can while I'm on here but I mean at the same time I really don't want to make this video too long so um... <laughs> All right, so I really don't see any more as far as on my no on notifications on my YouTube channel. So let me go to my emails and try to scroll through them just real quick. Oh. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, uh, guys, also, uh, while I'm thinking about this, uh, fuel, whenever you're leasing on with a company, uh, like I said, call around to all these different companies, um, uh, because what company's good for me may not be good for you and vice versa. What company may be good for you may not be good for me. We all have our different priorities and opinions of companies and, and all that kind of stuff. So hush my dog's in here whining but um uh, they so uh some companies offer a very very good di uh, fuel discount uh some companies may not offer one that great um uh, so and then so that's another thing guys is a lot of people say like i'm gonna use this for an example indiana transport in a lot of people do not like indiana transport because uh Yes, they usually have some of the lowest paying freight, um, and that is true. 
uh, and it sucks. But they have one of the best fuel discounts in the industry, in my opinion. Uh, so, if a lot of people think the grass is greener on the other side. Guys, the grass is not always greener on the other side. Um, in the end, all transport companies, uh, whether it be RV, whether it be trucking, a hot shot, whatever, they are all the same. So, um... I mean, one may be a little bit better than the other, but for the most part, they're all the same. Uh, you may think, like back during uh, a couple years ago, whenever RV transport was booming, then, I mean, a lot of people was jumping ship going to the other. Then they'd get over there, then they'd want to come back. And the reason they was doing that is because then uh, we would get, uh, our freight may be down here, somebody else another company may raise their freight or uh, their rates and then so somebody may jump ship and go over here well guess what two or three weeks later that company's done dropped their freight and now they're wanting to come back over here or maybe they get over there and yeah that company may be paying more but hey they ain't got no freight now you're sitting not making any money um i mean yes it sucks having to to pull cheap freight and a lot of and a lot of the reason behind that is because um you got so many people out here that are just getting into this not knowing any better and they're going to haul it and so they know that that they can get somebody to haul it and that sucks so um but i don't know anyway um but ask those questions um and so, time you figure up the say a company may be paying lower, the uh, fuel discount may be up here, versus a company may be paying higher, fuel discount may be down here. So time you figure it all up, it's going to average out about the same. So, I mean, either you're not getting the rates up front and you're spending more in fuel. Or vice versa. So in the end, it's all averaging out about the same, guys. I mean, I don't know. Some people just don't understand that. Some people only look at that the what they're making. They don't really pay attention to what they're spending in fuel. So they're not factoring that in. You got to factor in everything, all your expenses, every single thing, all the way from from gloves. I mean, you have to factor in everything to maximize your profit. So, like I said, it all averages out about the same. So, people putting down one company versus another company, guys, it's all about the same. If you figure, if you really sit down and figure it up. Um. So, some people just now getting into this, and you guys, and I, I've seen this on on people just getting into this, just starting a YouTube channel and all this stuff, and and um. And so they want to make videos saying they're not making any money, they're not, and all that kind of stuff. And a lot of people say there's no money in RV transport. No and yes. The people who get out here and just go with just any company or uh, whatever, well, say like with company I'm with, man, they offer loads all over the place, pretty much all around the country. Um, and they have the most loads, pretty much. Um, all right, so what happens if you go to another company? They may be paying more, but what happens if they don't have any freight? What happens if they don't have freight going in the direction that you want or need to go? Um, so all that stuff plays a factor. Um, it won't make me say I live down here in Mississippi. If I get up, if I have, if I hire on with a company or lease on with a company and I go up to Indiana, and maybe the only thing they have uh, freight-wise going to, say, Washington, Oregon, um, say, um, New York, um, Connecticut, places like that. Say, basically, like the Northeast, Northwest. That doesn't do me any good. Because I get up there. Well, now I can't. I'm going to have to come. I got to go up there on my own dime. Now I got to come back home on my own dime. So you got to think about all that. That's the reason you're not making any money. The 
you get up here and you go, um, say that maybe they only have short runs. Well, say if uh, all they have is like these little short ones, three, 400 miles. Well, it doesn't do me any good to go from Mississippi or say if you live in Texas or Florida or somewhere like that. It doesn't do you any good to drive all, say my situation, 670 miles up there, pull a 300 mile or either two or three, 300 mile runs. And then now I, got, I still got to come back home on my dime unless I just plan on staying up there. I mean, like I said, that's the reason you're not making any money. Uh, you're not making any money because uh, maybe you're trying to live. I mean, this may piss some people off, but it's the truth. Uh, maybe you're trying to live above your means. Um, so, I mean, y'all seen, go check out my other videos, getting started on a budget. Um, you're not making any money because maybe you want the finer things in life. Uh, maybe you want all the new stuff. You want a new truck. You want a brand new fifth wheel. You want a, a brand new fuel tank, all that stuff. Guys, go check out Facebook Marketplace. You can get this stuff, uh, cheap. And most time in good shape. My fifth wheel, guys, that's a $1,200 fifth wheel. I found it in Louisville, Kentucky for $500, and it was only used one time. Um, so, and just getting started into this, uh, you do not have to have a, and that's another question that some people ask. The, the only thing you have to have getting started into this is a truck. You got to have a DOT inspection done on that truck, which you got to have it done every single year. And I know it's getting on like 42 minutes, uh, or probably longer than that since I had to start over. But uh, you got to have your mud flaps, uh, your rock guard, and uh, you got to have stuff like triangles, fire extinguisher, things like that. And um, also, you guys, you got to have a DOT medical uh, car. You got to have a DOT physical done uh, in order to do this. So. But, and then a weight distribution hitch. That's the only thing you need to get started. All the other things are just benefits. Um, the uh, auxiliary tank, fifth wheel. Uh, you do not have to have that. Yes, it is important, especially the auxiliary tank. Uh, if you had to choose between auxiliary tank, fifth wheel, I would get the auxiliary tank first because that is, I promise you guys, that is going to pay for itself in a month. I promise you uh, from the from being able to get fuel here cheap versus having to stop here where it's expensive and stop here where it's expensive and so on. So you can skip all the middle places and go from here where it's cheap to here where it's cheap. So that it will pay for itself in a month. Then get your fifth wheel. Uh, and then start getting other things out fitting your truck as you uh, start making more money. But a lot of people, guys, they want to get brand new truck and they want to go straight up to Elkhart and whether it be Dan's, Dewey Depot, or wherever, and which I'm not putting them down. I'm, I'm, they're, they're great places to get your truck outfitted. But they want to do all of it at once. So they go up there, they spend four or $5,000 to get their truck completely outfitted to do, be able to do whatever they want, and now they're broke. And... So now they leave on their first run and their truck breaks down. Now they don't have anything. They're broke. They don't even have enough money to pay the tow bill. So, and that goes back to putting in a maintenance fund. Guys, I know I'm rambling and going off topic, but I'll try to make a, that's what I'm going to do. I want to try to do another video as far as uh, putting back a maintenance fund and the importance of that. So, and all kind of different stuff. So I don't want to make this too long. But anyway, guys, I hope that helped uh, the person who asked that. Uh, uh, pitch uh, X or something. Bro, one, I think. I think that's what it was. Uh, guys, I, I hope this answered your questions. So, uh, guys, y'all stay tuned. Uh, I don't know. I've been saying I'm going to do it, and I don't know exactly when. Uh, I may try to do it next weekend. I do not know. Um uh, but I plan on doing a live, and this might help a lot of people out. So what I plan on doing is putting out, say, a little short video or, or something like that, saying, hey, I'm going to be doing a live on such and such date at such and such time, and y'all stay tuned. Um, so that way all y'all know in advance, and that way we can sit there and do that. Um, 
like I said in one of my previous videos, guys, most of y'all know I am a volunteer firefighter. Um, now, whenever I sit down to do my live, such as my phone, stuff like that, I'm cutting it off so that way we can't be interrupted. Um, but, like I said, me being a volunteer firefighter, um, guys, I'm passionate about that. Um, I love helping people. And and uh, so if my pager goes off and I have to respond to a call, then the the live just may have to be cut short or, or whatever. Or um, if, say, if I get a call right before the live is supposed to start, I know that's not good. It doesn't look good for me to, to schedule something like that and then don't commit to it. But if I schedule a live and it doesn't happen or it's cut short, that's why. If, guys, if y'all don't understand that and, and y'all can't respect that, then honestly, I don't care. Go watch somebody else's video. Because um, if you're that kind of person to where you don't have that much respect for me going and, and helping somebody else save their life or whatever, then honestly, I don't want you watching my channel. I'm just, I'm being plain honest. Uh, most of y'all know that I, I speak my mind. Um, I have gotten a lot better with, with the things I say in my videos. Uh, y'all go back and watch some of my very first videos. Y'all know how much I speak my mind. But, um, but guys, that's, that's just the way it is. So, um, but guys, stay tuned. I, I do plan on doing a live uh, here real soon. And uh, maybe we can sit down here and, and, add, and answer some of these questions and stuff like this in more detail. So, but guys, if y'all don't mind, y'all hit that like, share, subscribe button. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, it really helps me out. Uh, guys, I'm almost to that thousand mark. Please, please, please hit that subscribe button. And uh, I think I got about close to 150 more and I'll be at the, the thousand mark. So, uh, guys, please help me get there. It, hitting that subscribe button doesn't cost anything. Just reach your finger up there and push it. It's free. Um, and so, I don't know. But anyway, we're going to get off here. I'm sorry that this video was so long and... But I hope I answered a lot of people's questions. So, so we'll get back to you on the next one. So as always, y'all be safe. Simplify.